What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to mount a set of tires on your beadlock wheels. We're gonna be working with some Tri-Ace tires today. These are a 37, 13 and a half by 17 tire. And we're gonna be working with some Method race wheels. These are going to be the 103 beadlocks that they offer. Let's see here. They wrap everything super nicely in these boxes. This is gonna be your beadlock ring right here. Bunch more packing. Oh, I got nine wheels total, and these all got shipped to my house. None of them got messed up, so. You got your beadlock ring bolts right here, and all your other hardware. But these are gonna be the machine finish. It's a five on 5.5 lug pattern for 5.8 studs. These are set up for race hubs, which are on the daily, that's what. These are gonna be going on, I should mention that. These wheels and tires right here are gonna be going on Pamela, my 1994 F-150. And then I also have another set of wheels that are sitting here for my diesel, which you guys haven't seen yet. That's gonna be another kind of project build series on the channel. Actually, let me just show you that real quick. I'll show you the diesel just so you guys can get an idea what this thing is. It's a 1988 F-250 with a 7.3 IDI non-turbo motor in it. But I have done a couple things to this thing already. I went through the interior. It did have a blue interior in here before, but I went ahead and made it all gray. So it had a gray bench seat in it already, but I went ahead and painted the dash, um, pulled basically everything out of the truck, painted the door panels. I still need some armrests on here, but just cleaned everything up. It didn't have a carpet kit in it before. So I added the carpet kit. And as you can see, I also have already added <laughs> A sidewinder shifter to it just because I didn't like the way that this truck shifts by itself so I deleted the stock column and then added the shifter into it but it is a pretty clean truck like I said I pulled this entire interior apart got it all out of the truck cleaned everything painted a bunch of stuff and then got it all reassembled and it's looking super good I do need to get a headliner for it it didn't come with one so I want to put a nice headliner in it like I do in Pamela but this thing is cleaning up pretty good for what it is. You can see though, Pamela is a full-blown hovercraft right now. I did already sell the wheels and tires off this truck because I knew these wheels were coming. So the BTRs that were on here and the uh, BFG all-terrains, they are gone. So I need to get these wheels and tires mounted right now so I can get these back on the truck and not have a down truck right now because it kind of sucks. So. We got Ryan over here What's helping me. Torque these things up, dog. Yeah, lots of fun. You staying quarantined or what? Yep. Six feet. Better stay away six feet, dude. But we do have a couple of these mounted already. I'm gonna walk through showing you guys how to get this set of wheels put together right now. So I'll just kind of go over everything that we need real quick. The first one being a dead blow hammer. You're gonna need this to be able to get your tire over your beadlock, like kind of mounting surface once you get the tire onto the wheel. You'll also need a ratcheting wrench to tighten your beadlock bolts down. You'll need some type of tool to be able to get your valve core and valve stem through the wheel to get it seated on the wheel. You'll definitely need some anti-seize to be able to put on all your beadlock bolts so they don't corrode inside of the wheel over time. So when you go to pull everything back apart later, it's not a headache and you're snapping bolts off all over the place. Um, you're also gonna need soapy water to be able to get the tire seated onto the wheel first thing. You also need a, this isn't an impact, it's kind of like a, I forget what they call these, but it's just a real simple kind of keyed in style impact, really low torque. So this is good for getting the bolts down real quickly once you get them hand started. And then the last thing is going to be your torque wrench. This is very crucial to getting all your beadlock bolts tight and all exactly the same. So you definitely need one of these to get your beadlock ring bolts snugged up. And that should be it as far as tools. So let's get started on this wheel, get this thing pulled out right here. Like I said, it comes with a bunch of like protective stuff for when it gets shipped. So these wheels do not get messed up literally at all in shipping. So the first thing, once you get these pulled out of the box, whoa, Jesus. First thing you wanna do when you get these pulled out of the box is you wanna get your valve core installed in the wheel. Some people will get the tire put on over the first lip first and then put your valve core in but I like to do it first thing, that way you're not forgetting about it because if you forget about doing this freaking valve core, you're gonna have a really hard time getting this thing on later. So do it right now. So first thing, like I said, valve core, what I'll do is get the soapy water, 
It's kind of squirted on there a little bit. Work it around so it's, it goes in nice and easy. You're not pinching the rubber on here up against the wheel at all and creating like a, some type of leak because that's obviously going to be the worst thing possible. Just like that. And all this is right here, I use this for shocks because they use a Schrader valve exactly like a wheel. So I can use this just to pull it through, but any type of Schrader tool to be able to pull it through and get it seated is all you need. But just like that, she pops right in. Valve core is nice and seated in there. So now I can go ahead and get the tire started and get it on the wheel itself. So this next step of getting the tire actually onto the wheel itself is gonna take more than likely two people depending on how much you weigh. I don't weigh very much, so I don't have enough pressure to put, put this tire on by myself. So I do have Ryan over here, and my dad's probably gonna be helping a little bit too to help us get the actual tire seated to get the beadlock ring on. And you'll see that right now, but I'm gonna set you guys up on a tripod so we can get this tire put on here, and let's go. So what you wanna do, first thing is figure out which side of the tire you want to have faced out towards the outside of the vehicle. This has just the normal side and then it obviously has the yellow wall side. I'm going yellow wall side out. So I'll go ahead and flip that around. This is where your soapy water really comes into play. You wanna get this whole inside lip nicely coated in soapy water and then get the face of the wheel coated in soapy water too because it's really gonna help get this tire over that wheel so you can get it onto there. So what you do is you get one side of the tire underneath the lip of the wheel, and then you just start working your way around the tire and get it pressed on. It's gonna definitely take some force, so be prepared to spend some time on this. <laughs> So once you get this thing like this, you wanna get the wheel set up with a bucket underneath it, like a five gallon bucket underneath it. That way you can get the tire to kind of relax around it. And you can start getting your beadlock ring set with your tire, start beating it with the mallet to get all this set up. And I'll show you guys that right now. And see, setting up on a bucket right there. And what you wanna do is this ring right here, the outside of the tire or outside of the wheel, you want to get the tire to sit right outside of. So. You can see right here, the tire overlaps the wheel a little bit, and then it comes back out right here. All this right here, you need to take your rubber mallet or whatever hammer you have and beat this back to get it back tucked behind this wheel. And it is very difficult because you're gonna need someone holding on this side, holding the edge of the tire down on each side of where it's actually touching the wheel already on the beadlock ring. So right here is gonna be your trouble spot and that's gonna take some time to hammer out. But as long as you have either a clamp or someone holding on each side of where it's already around the wheel, you should be able to start to beat your way closer. And you'll see that right now. I'll throw you guys on the tripod again and you can get an idea on how to do this. So just like that, oh, yeah. all it takes is a little bit of mallet work, a couple hands, you can get this thing set all the way around here. It does get tricky when you get to about that much of the lip uh, overhanging the wheel still. You really gotta get in there with the, with the mallet and give it a couple whacks, but that's sitting on there now. A big tip for getting this set around here, on the bottom side, you saw us use soapy water. On this lip right here, when you go to, to do this and get this beat around here, you wanna clean this surface up really good, the wheel and the, the tire and then use it dry, like put it on dry. Do not use soapy water because it's gonna make it extremely hard to get this lip set around here because it's just gonna continually just pop out because of the soapy water. So now we can go ahead, take our beadlock ring, get this set up on the wheel. And the cool part about the methods is you can see it has more holes than needed. And that is because you can alternate what holes you're in. So if you wanna line it up for a certain set of holes now, you can, if you break a bolt off in here for whatever reason down the road, you can swap over to your other set of bolt holes and then you have a perfect set of bolt holes in there. So ring sets down on there just like that. Pretty old girl. And then this is what your hardware comes in. So it's gonna be a bunch of 5 16 by inch and a quarter hardware. 
You got all your bolts, comes with your washers, and it also comes with every wheel, comes with a valve core, so you do not need to buy these. I did not know that, and I went out and bought valve cores for all my wheels, but they got you hooked up, and they come with them, so you do not need to buy them. Now that we have all these started by hand, I'm gonna go with my impact. I set it on the number one selection on the impact, so it's literally barely any torque at all. What I'm gonna do is just get all these started so they touch the actual beadlock ring and everything starts to kind of set itself down. So I'll go ahead, swap it over to two. Now that I chase the circle a couple times. Now that I torqued everything, or got everything snugged up on the number two setting with the impact, go ahead, got my torque wrench set to 20 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead. So I'll take my Sharpie and what I'll do is mark one bolt, basically right in front of where I'm at. That way I know I don't get uh, kind of messed up when I start chasing the circle, getting everything torqued down, I know exactly where I started and where I'm gonna stop at. It's just easy, it's something that you can forget pretty easily if you don't mark it, so get it to 20. And then what I'll do is basically just jump. I'll go, I'll skip one every single time, so I'll jump to the, the following one and then just work my way around. And then when I come back around the second time, once I get back to here, I'll jump to that other one right next to it and then jump every other one and just keep chasing the circle until everything is at a perfect 20 foot pounds. All right, so you saw I went every other one, then swapped to the opposite, went every other one, and then chased all the way around the circle one whole time going each individual one making sure everything was at 20 foot pounds everything's right there all right so now that we got our beadlock ring on here what we're going to do is go ahead and start filling the tire up what you want to do is first get your soapy water what i like to do and this is personal preference is i like to get this pretty soaked because you can you can see on these wheels right here they have a pretty good lift that the tire needs to sit over or get over to be able to get seated so instead of having it be an extremely loud gunshot pop to get it seated. I like to use a little bit of soapy water to help. So I don't have any fancy tool to do this either to get me super far away from the wheel. So we're just going for it. Almost. It's gonna be a loud one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there she goes. There it goes. All right, so now that your bead's seated all the way around, just like that, you can go ahead and fill it all the way up to your normal tire pressure. And what we'll do on these is go ahead and once we have them filled up, I need to take them down to the local discount tire and they'll balance the tires for me because being a street vehicle, I do want this truck to ride nicely on the street because that's mostly what it's doing. So I don't want some unbalanced tires, but like a pre-runner, this could basically be it. You don't even really need to balance. I did just get the wheels and tires back from being balanced. You guys at the tire shop said that the most weight that they used on one of these tires is five ounces. I don't know if that's a lot. They said it wasn't too much. Um, that does look, I don't know if that's the most right there, but that does look like a lot of weights. But <laughs> anyways, these are done. So now I can go ahead and get these installed on the truck see how she looks. Ooh, wait. Brashies?
I just pulled the truck out from underneath the carport so you guys could get a better look at how the truck is back on the ground. And I am absolutely pumped on the way that this truck looks with this new wheel and tire combo. The tire's just a little bit wider than the old setup that I had. I went from a 12 and a half tire to a 13 and a half width tire. So it definitely looks a little bit wider than it did before. The track width front and rear is really nice. You can't see because the wheels turned a little bit, but you can tell the rear sits in the fender well really nicely. The offset on the wheels went from a zero offset to a negative 12 offset with a four and a half inch back spacing. So I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the video before. I do like the way that these look with the yellow labels pointed out to kind of contrast with the white on the truck. And then you obviously got to get your logo on the wheel lined up with the logo on the tire. So just a little tip and trick right there, but I cannot believe how good this truck looks with a fully machine finish wheel on it. And one other thing that I kind of wanted to touch on really quick is the diesel. I know I talked about this truck for a second a little bit earlier in the video, but the plans for this truck are this is going to be my new daily driver that I'm going to drive every day. That way I'm not driving Pamela anymore every day and kind of putting miles on that truck that I don't really need to be putting on that truck. So this thing, what I want to do for this is first things first is I already have the wheels that are going to match Pamela. So I have a non beadlock version wheel for this truck that I want to get put on it. I'm just waiting to get my 35 inch tires and the reason for that is because I'm looking for a matching set that will match Pamela but also I need to get the front of the truck lifted up first before I can fit a 35 inch tire and to do that what I'm going to need to do is build a set of radius arms and get a set of coilovers on the front of this truck to be able to get it lifted up um, so that will be a video coming up on this truck is going to be making the radius arms and then getting a coilover set up in there to get the front of that truck up um, another thing that I want to do for this truck is get it painted eventually so this truck it is a white color but it's an off-white compared to what Pamela is and as well as what the pre-runner is so I want to get this truck to match paint wise it does need paint it needs bodywork too there's a bunch of dents and stuff in this truck it was an old farm truck so I want to get this thing cleaned up and have it looking as good as this thing so I can't my standards for vehicles are definitely pretty high so I want to get this to my standards. Once it's painted, another thing I want to do is get this bed done. Um, I'm going to have Dallas down at San Diego Linex, Linex the bed, and I can make a full video on how he actually shoots all that stuff if you guys are inter interested in seeing that. So I can do that as well. And then I'm going to tint the windows as well. So that's going to be all a bunch of stuff coming up in uh, future videos. This is going to be a little mini build series on this truck. I do want to do a Banks turbo kit on that truck as well. I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned it's a 7.3 non-turbo IDI motor. So I want to put a Banks turbo kit on it. So hopefully that will be coming in the future as well. That's going to do it for this video though. Hopefully you guys learned something from this and later down the road, if you ever end up buying beadlocks, you can save yourself a little bit of money and do it yourself. If you guys like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.